Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of Inside Career Technical Education. I'm Ann Baldwin, one of your hosts. And I'm the other host, Jim Beloga, <laughs> president and CEO of YTI Career Institute and Porter and Chester Institute. That's right. We've got a, a great guy that that is an instructor and so much more at one of your campuses, Jim. We want to introduce up in York, Pennsylvania, we want to introduce uh, Tom Farrell, and he is the YTI program Director for the Electronic Engineering Technology Department at the YTI York campus. Thus, the reason I had to read this from my paper. So, Tom, Tom, you're 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 a good friend to both Jim and I. So, thank you for taking the time out of your classroom uh, to join us for this podcast. You're very welcome. Yeah. So, Tom. Uh, so, if you could maybe share, she will jump right into it. Share with our mm-hmm. podcast viewers. Um, you know, talk a little bit about the, um, I call it the EET uh, program, but uh, the, elec- the Electronic uh, Engineering Technology Program at the York campus. Talk, talk a little bit about uh, some of the things that uh, a prospective student uh, who might have some interest um, you know, in the electronic world um, uh, or electronic field, uh, uh, y- y- you might be able to articulate to, uh, to the podcast viewers. Okay. Um, well, our electronic engineering program here at YTI in York, Pennsylvania, is a 20-month program. Uh, we have eight 10-week courses, and within these courses, uh, we have um, we start with basic electronics. We build foundations through analog, digital. Um, then we go into the communications, into networking, and then into some of the systems. Um, our students are very well-rounded once they uh, leave the school um, to go to places such as Northrop Grumman, uh, some of the energy um, places around in our area and, and elsewhere. Our students go all over the country. Uh, mm-hmm. I even have an externship in Hawaii. Wow. So, well, I want to sign up for that. Yeah, one. me too. Come yeah. on, I, yeah, I'll, I'll really. sign up for the program if I can do my externship <laughs> in Hawaii. Wow. So, Tom, you know, I was recently up there. Tom, I mean, Jim, you visited the campus up in York as well. What I find really impressive too are the industry model labs. I mean, classroom after classroom of, of things that I have no idea what they are, but hanging on the wall that that your students really get their hands on, and you keep up with the times, you keep up with the technology. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, no, it, it is. I mean, I think I, you know, I, I we take I think great pride in 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 our labs being industry modeled yep. and and really taking the advice of our program advisory committee members in terms of making the curriculum uh, in the lab environments, uh, you know, as real world as current real world as possible. Yep. Obviously, you know, in area in in all areas of our lives, I and mean, with technology impacting us and changing, you know, literally every yeah. day, uh, you know, sometimes that's a little bit more difficult to do. But again, we 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 take great pride in in making sure that our, our, our learning environments are industry modeled. Yeah, you know, and, and this just points to the investment that both YTI and PCI put into their students. So they invest in you to make sure that everything's up to date. You mentioned the advisory boards. These are people that are really in the industry that say, you need this hanging on the wall. Students need to work on this. But also, you know, it's an investment for you, the student. And especially now with this blended learning program, and Tom, maybe you can talk a little bit about that, about the flexibility that your students are offered now because it's lecture online and then hands-on labs. Um, no problem. Um, our basic uh, format of our, is both hands-on labs, and then we have um, the online instructions for our theory. Um, these these are working out very well for us. Uh, the hands-on, of course, is everything that that student would have gathered on the theory online uh, during the week, and then they actually bring that into the school. Uh, for actual hands-on labs, which uh, you were right, we have to keep up with the industry because the industry has changed so much that it's hard to keep our employers with uh, employees coming out of the schools. It's just the demand is huge. Yeah, they're almost standing at your front door waiting for these kids to get out of the program. Yes, yes. (laughs) Yeah. Big shortage. Yeah. Yeah. And it is interesting because, I mean, everything about our lives today are digital, mm-hmm. you know, and, you, and, you, and, yes. and obviously there's still analog systems out there. But 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 again, I think the digital systems that have really taken over all aspects of our lives, it's just amazing to me. Um, 
uh, you know, the, the ranging from, you know, being able to, you know, start your, start your car from your phone to buying Bitcoin on your <laughs> oh, phone yeah. to, yeah. you know, using, uh, using your phone and an app to basically interact with the nest and you can control the temperature in your house when you're uh, maybe on that externship in Hawaii. Yeah. It's mind blowing. Uh, yeah. Uh, it it, it's, it really, it's, it's amazing to me. And I think, um, you know, one of the things that, you know, I, I'm, um, very proud of and, and, and hopeful for is, and Tom mentioned it, is the whole concept of this blended learning and having le- having the best of both worlds. Lecture online, so you have to do your schoolwork every day. Uh, you just don't yes. have to. You just don't have to spend the time or the money. You know, traveling to you know a physical classroom right. to sit in a classroom mm-hmm. to listen to a lecture. You can do it, um, you know, at your at your home or at, at work. But again, you've got to commit to to doing your schoolwork every day. And then and then once you get that 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 lecture and theory portion done, then you end up in in the industry model labs and you're applying what that theory, what you're learning. And so it's really the best of both worlds, I think. And so uh, I, I, I would encourage our podcast viewers to, you know, to, you know, to share this information with folks, because, again, I think so many folks aren't really quite sure what blended or hybrid learning really means. And it really is a, an opportunity, I think, for more folks, if they want to get uh, skilled up or reskilled. To, to pursue education. Absolutely. At, you know, and yep. this is a great yes. time, I think, to be right. doing this kind of stuff. Right. You know, Tom, the other thing that I found impressive when, when I was up there is the, you know, just the variety of positions that graduates of your program can either go, you know, and do their externships and usually get hired. But talk a little bit about the different career paths that folks in the program, the Electronic Engineering Technology Department program. Um, what, where can they go? What can they do? Some of the folks that electronics is basically can open the doors to any type of industry now because everything has electronics. Mm-hmm. So we have folks going out here. They want to be bench technicians. So they they work on bench, you know, at, for a company. They troubleshoot so forth. We have assemblers, electronic assemblers. If they're in production, that's an avenue they can go. We also have uh, folks that want to go out into the field, service work. That's where I came from. Hmm. Um, a lot of folks want to go out and work on um, satellite TV still. There's still television work. Um, you know, just normal, everyday things um, that these people can, you know, use for electronics, they go to. Um, there's document services that we have. Um, they actually deal with networking. They deal with the copy products. Uh, we have some folks that go into the telecommunications, such as Verizon, um, places like that. They want to work on satellite uh, or the cell phone towers. We yeah. So I, I mean, I think the, the the I don't mean to interrupt you, but I mean we yeah. could talk about the opportunities yeah. all day. And you know, when, yes. when when I was chatting with you earlier, you know, you even mentioned the the aviation industry that you've got a female graduate from YTI in your program yes. that's now working for Boeing. Yes, and I was getting ready to talk about uh, this young lady. Um, well, yeah, so Tom, go ahead. Share, share with the podcast viewers a little bit about um, <clears throat> this graduate who's working at Boeing. Okay. Um, this young lady went or graduated from YTI in 2020, and uh, she was a mother of two. She was from Reading, which is a pretty good haul from here. Mm-hmm. She actually... Um, started working for Volvo out in Hagerstown, Maryland as an electronic technician that worked on these new engines, diesel engines with the sensors. That's what she did. Mm-hmm. Well, COVID <laughs> came along and sort of put the brakes on that. They had a reduction in staffing and so forth. So she basically got laid off after externship. Well, she applied to uh, a place down in uh, Patuxent River is the Boeing company and it's part of the Naval Air Station Patuxent River Maryland mm-hmm. and uh, Tracy actually is a instrumentation technician on F-18 fighter jets hmm. she, amazing she, she actually goes you know I have pictures of her setting cockpits you know in these F-18s you know just it's awesome this advisory board that you have uh, yes. They help you out because you've got these companies that want these employees out of your program, right? They want to hire these Correct. people out of the YTI program. And Correct. so they're constantly giving you input as to what's relevant. What should students be working on? What do they need? 
Yes. Uh, some of that, you know, is simple things like reading schematics, mm. you know, different news schematics that have come out. You know, when years ago we had paper schematics. Oh, remember well, those now, days? Was, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they laid across your table. Nowadays, you know, you can get your schematics right on your iPhone. Mm-hmm. You know, it, so these these advisors that we have advisory board they give us ideas on what they like to see out of our technicians you know out of what we teach them instruction Mm -hmm. um they keep in touch with us so we stay on the right track you know we we can't be teaching technology out of the 1970s or or even the 2000 i mean everything changes so quickly so it's great right right so it's great to hear you that you have that input and tom farrell i've seen you in action i've seen you in the industry model labs with your students you know hats off to you for taking the skill keeping up with um today's technology and teaching these people um a career a real skilled trade that can take them you know the sky's the limit really yeah You're, you're right yeah, and, and, and Tom, maybe it, it, just before we start to part uh, uh, the, and wrap up the podcast, uh, what what advice would you have for you know either maybe a high school student or or a young a young adult who's working you know who may have taken a couple of gap years uh, after graduating from high school? What what advice would you have to you know uh, our podcast viewers about you know uh, uh, what kind of interest you would need to have to be successful in this in this program? Um, well, Jim. I think the the easiest way to to answer that is that the prospective student, um, you know, look into this field, you know, invest a little bit of time into research. Mm -hmm. This field goes in every direction from space to undersea technology, um, medical, it's, it's auto train. You know, there are so many avenues that we can, take electronics into they need to look to see where they could be in 10 years or 20 years you know the information is there it's at your fingertips yeah and we always talk about this take a step back do your research go to the website because the website is the best place to get the information on this program or any of the programs that are offered and it's yti.ed you yti.edu well tom farrell thank you so much this was a a lot to talk about um hopefully we've piqued your interest or you pass this along to somebody who might be interested right jim absolutely it's uh it is an it's one of my favorite programs at um, at our school uh because again i think you can go you can go in a lot of different directions and um and again i think uh you know when we look back um the the electronic aspect of our lives has has accelerated and continues to accelerate yep. so this is in in my opinion a, a really great foundational program you know for folks to uh, uh really take a look at yep. and um and again i just want to thank th- thank tom for for all that he does for our students and and um i'm really excited to uh, continue to f- you know showcase some of these students who are working at you know some of these um you know larger companies doing some really cool things yeah absolutely so yes. again go to yti.edu and thank you so much for tuning into this edition of inside career technical education 